everyone's attention. That's great. So, marching? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try another one. It's the same? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 means good. It's the same. That means how are you? And then you say yeah. Yeah. Yes, if you say a yeah, boko, that means it's, it's yes, a yeah, boko means I'm doing very well. Yes. Okay. So today we are doing a city tour of Accra and uh, it's gonna be a very exciting one. Um, we're going to learn about Nkrumah, we're going to learn about Ghana's struggle for Ghana's independence, and we're going to learn about uh, some few things that would match up to um, what we'll be seeing entirely through our entire trip. And your questions are welcome. We'll also be seeing uh, great Pan-Africanists who actually shaped Ghana's um, independence till now, and who had great impact on Ghana's history. And uh, these people are um, W.E.B. Du Bois and George Padmore. But apart from that, there have been great people, Pan-Africanists, who actually shaped Ghana's history through our first president, Dr. Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah. You might ask me what's the meaning of Osajifo. Osajifo means redeemer. Redeemer, Osajifo. Yes, it was a name that was given to him by the women of Ghana. Yes. Today is Monday. It's going to be very, very busy. Um, this morning, people are rushing to work. Um, the day starts very early, especially the market women, um, those downtown. And interestingly, most of our um, sites are actually in downtown. So we'll be in traffic a bit as we go along. Um, they start as early as 4.30 a.m. They have to wake up at 4.30 a.m. to go to the market to set up their words. And so by 5 o'clock, they should be done. Later by 6, and then people come up, come there to shop and buy. Um, the biggest downtown um, opening market in Accra is called the Makola Market. Makola Market. Yes. And um, we're going to see and compare. Um, Accra has developed over the years. Um, there's a place called Old Accra, where Accra actually started from. And you could see the new sites. This part of Accra is actually new sites. And it's actually the, you would say, the high class and middle class community. When we go downtown, you would see and compare and see where Accra started from. Basically, Accra actually started, or Accra became a capital in during the British Gold Coast in 1877. Okay. When I say Gold Coast, you understand? Yes. That before the name Ghana, this country became Ghana, this whole place was called the Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but before it was even called the Gold Coast, um, you know that the Portuguese were the first to have arrived here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And they named um, Elmina, mm -hmm. Damina. We'll talk more about it, which means the mine. Mm -hmm. We'll talk yeah, more about yeah. it. So, Accra became capital back then when the British moved from Cape Coast, which was then the administrative center, to Accra in 1877. Um, one of the main reasons was um, at that time, most of the other Europeans have sold their forts and their buildings over to the British, handed over everything to the British. The Portuguese were the last to do that in 1471, 1472, uh, the Portuguese handed over everything that they had. And so the British took over and moved to Accra. All the reasons why they moved to Accra was because Accra was more drier compared to uh, Cape Coast. So they moved here. And over the years, uh, Accra has expanded to what is now. But Accra is the indigenous home for the people called the Gans, G-A, Gan. Yes, Gan. You have to vibrate, Gan. Exactly, yes. And they speak the Gan language. Yes. Say something. Are you saying something in Gan? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there's one common thing that uh, people would ask you. Um, 
Oje Ko. Oje Ko. That means how are you? Okay. Yes. Oje Ko. Uh, oh, Minda Boshi. Thank you very much. Minda Boshi. That's a Ghana language. Minda Boshi. Yes. The, the Ghans moved here um, way, way back. You know, Ghana, I was saying earlier on, we have different ethnic groups. And all of them migrated from different areas to settle in different parts of the country. And um, when they migrated, um, the people who were here were they called the Lattes. Latin. And they named the people who were coming because they saw them coming on a boat. Lots of them. Very dark complexion. They named them Inkran. What is that again? Inkran. N K R A N. Inkran. Yes. And Inkran in, in the Latin language means ant. Yes. A N T. Ant. Yeah. And. Um, the Danish couldn't pronounce in Kran well, so it was corrupted to Akra, A K R A. Yes. Which over the years is spelled A C C R A. Akra. Oh, okay. So that means dark, dark skinned Yes. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> I was going to ask you, was that something that, was it an English term or something? Yes. You, you, you already covered it. Okay. So. All over, people started calling the girl people in Crown Four. That means the ant people. Yes. And they also, because in the Ga language, Gaga means ant. Gaga, G A G A, means ant. Yes. So it became Ga. You say ants like ants? Yeah. Yes. Ants like No, ants. Yeah. Yeah. Ants. Yeah, the yes. insect, yes. Because the insect is dark. Yes, yes. So the, the gas um, are believed to have migrated from um, Nubia. Yes. Yes. And they moved here. And so all of our, um, well, they've settled along the coast of Ghana, especially um, there's a part from, um, it's called Malam, <clears throat> all the way stretch from the west to the east. And so the group of them, we call them the Ga Adangbe. <coughs> the Ga Adangbe. And one common history that they share is a festival that they celebrate called the Homowo. Homowo. Homowo means hoot at hunger, shame at hunger. <coughs> In their history, when they had come here, the time came where there was severe famine. At the point that parents were ready to kill their children for food. So they had to consult their chief and their priest, who later gave them a grain or seeds of maize to plant. And when they planted it, they were able to harvest a lot of them. And so one common um, staple food of the guns is called kinky. Yeah. It's made from corn. But when they've planted that seed, they prepared a special meal for the gods. They call it pigle. It's made from powdered corn and you have palm oil on it. And during the festival, they go about all the traditional places where they have their gods and they sprinkle this food to them to say thank you. Farming thought it would consume us and cause us to kill our children. But thanks to the God, we've been able to overcome. So it's shame at hunger, hoot at hunger. So it's called homowo. Homowo, homo go, homowo shame. Like homo, homo is hunger. So homowo go, shame at hunger, hoot at hunger. So they celebrate it within the period of uh, March, different places in August. So mostly the biggest faces are around August. And that is what about a brief about the Ga people. Accra is actually a small um, city. It's um, roughly about 225 square miles or square kilometers. That's about 837 square miles. It's very small. The smallest of all the 10 regions in Ghana. And I would be interchanging Accra because we have the greater Accra region. And people normally say Accra 
for the greater Accra region. But Accra itself, the capital, is actually downtown, which is very small. Um, the whole area is about 60 square um, kilometers. Yes. But it is the most dense metropolis or city in the country. Wow. Yes. Is that, is that small in terms of um, just the, the region? The size. Not compared to other African uh, Yeah, here in Ghana. Okay. Yeah, here in Ghana. Yeah. And you know that if you go to the east, all the way cross over to the east, um, our neighboring countries are Togo. And then if you go to the west, our neighboring country is La Côte d'Ivoire. And if you go all the way to the north, cross over, it's called Burkina Faso. Yes. So Ghana is bounded by French-speaking countries. We surrounded and sandwiched. The closest English-speaking country was Nigeria. You have to go to two other countries before you get to an English-speaking country. You have to go to Togo, Benin before you get to Nigeria. That's an unfortunate thing, and a very sad thing. And one of the things that the British or the Europeans did during what's called the scramble for Africa. Uh, but then you know, it's interesting to know that ethnic groups cut across boundaries because you have some ethnic groups or Asantes or Akans in Cote d'Ivoire. We have those in the Volta region or the Akko Eves that go into Togo. So it cuts across. And you have in the north, most of the people they are called Dagombes. And the Dagombes cut across to Burkina Faso. So ethnic groups cut across boundaries. Okay. So um, more about Accra. Um, you would notice that Accra is fast developing. Um, there are a lot of construction works going on, buildings coming up um, and all of that. And you have people moving to Accra because the government office is in, all in Accra. And people believe those, especially in the rural areas, uh, it's called rural urban migration, believe that when they come to Accra, they would find some work to do. And so most of people who migrate here actually leave their farmland or their farming activity and move to Accra, which is a very big challenge, and which the government is trying to incentive, uh, bring incentives for people to go back to farming. Because farming, uh, is about 34% to 40% of the country's economy. Yeah. Yes. So, um, they are especially the youth. They are, so, they are youth for planting jobs. They are all that um, programs that are going on to put the youth to agriculture to work. Yeah. yeah. So, we, we have very, very um, young guys going to farming, especially poultry. This year, we had planting for jobs for the youth. Um, um, next year, they're going to have rearing for jobs. Okay. That's for animal rearing. Uh, yes, so all this to promote uh, that. And so, um, fast forward. You know that Ghana um, gained independence set of March 1957. Um, first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence. And um, Accra played a major role in the struggle for independence. Again, um, I said the British moved to Accra in 1877. And uh, when they moved to Accra, a lot of things were happening. At that time, after one, the Second World War came up. And right after the Second World War, um, a lot of things changed all over the world. Here too, things changed. Because during the Second World War, and also the First World War, the British used all West African countries that they had colonized. Um, those people there to fight also in the war. And this also, they forgot that this also exposed people, and the indigenous people also, to, the, and to see what was happening. And so right after the Second World War, around 1945, um, when war ended, soon later, 1947, the first political party was formed. The first political party that was formed was called the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. It was founded by a person called J.B. Delqua. But the philanthropist, the person who actually moved, pushed 
was actually a very, very prominent man. Prominent man who, who actually financed the formation of the political party. He was a merchant into Good timber. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the money man is in. <laughs> Today there will be some shopping, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yes. <laughs> 